So now that we've gone over the software a little bit, let's get ready to make our first project. Here's a system diagram of what we're starting with. In order to do this, I have connected my server here in my office to a full HD monitor using an HDMI cable and a display port to HDMI adapter. Additionally, I have a second monitor hooked up in order to see the Pixera GUI. We'll go over the screens, mapping, and compositing tabs for this basic setup. Let's hop in. All right, so the first thing we're going to do when we get back to Pixera is go to the settings tab and create a new project. So I'm going to go to the settings and click on new. And you don't have to save your projects in this default directory. You can save them anywhere on your hard drive. I'm going to save this here as my first project. and Hit the save button. And I don't really care about this project I'm working on now, so I'm going to click no. So we've just created our first project. Now, just one other setting that I'm going to turn on so I don't lose any progress. I'm going to click on the project uh, setting again. And if I go down, we have this auto save parameter. And I'm going to go ahead and click enable auto save here. You can see that I get a matching icon up here that highlights that kind of fills in when I click on the button. That's that auto save feature. Uh, it's a quick way to turn it on and off if you would like. We have a couple parameters here. I'm going to leave those as my defaults for right now and head back over to the screens tab. So back over in the screens tab, I'm going to go grab a display because in my system diagram, I have a full HD monitor. So I'm going to go grab a display and click on generic again, double clicking or using the triangles here and click on this and drag it in. That's going to be our full HD display. Now I can click on this. And before we leave the screens tab, I'm going to always check two things in the inspector. I'm going to rename my uh, object here. I'm going to just call this main. And then I'm going to check that my canvas resolution matches the resolution of whatever I'm outputting to. So in this case, it's a full HD monitor. So it's a 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution, which is correct. I'll move it to wherever I feel is appropriate. Although here, maybe I'll just put it at uh, zero, oops, zero and two, just so it floats up a little bit. And you know, I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger so that way I have, uh, it's a little bit bigger in my workspace. All right, so moving away from the screens tab and into the mapping tab, this is where we're going to map our physical and digital objects together. So we are going to take our digital outputs and route them to our physical objects, like our display that we created in the screens tab. So on the left panel here, we have our library and project tree, just like we did in the screens tab, but we've added another panel and this panel is super important. This is the live panel. So if I click on this, we have our live server here. This is our local machine. And if we had other servers in the session, they would stack up here. And down in the bottom, I have a live toolbar and this toolbar has a bunch of really important icons and tools in it. And specifically, we're going to use this in order to connect our output to our display in Pixera. So the first tool that I'm going to use to do that is this rectangle with an eye in it, and that's going to toggle output identification. And so if I click this button and I'll go ahead and pull up my output here, we can see that my output is I've got a splash mark that's come up and it says local and it has the IP address of that machine and it says which graphics card and which output it is. And in this case, it looks like we are hooked up to graphics card one output five, which is great. So I'm going to click this off again in order to get my outputs back and I'll go ahead and remove that output from the screen there. So once I toggle off output identification, I'm going to navigate to my workspace and instead of the preview workspace, I'm going to switch over to the IO routing tab. And here we can see we have our machine and we can see the graphics card and we have these little connectors for each output. And I don't see my screen anywhere, but if I look in my workspace toolbar, once again, I have show all nodes, which is an N hotkey. So if I press that, we pull out a little bit and we can see the node for our main display. 
This is why naming things is so important. So if I take that output that we've already identified and I hook it up to this new mapping, we can see that main display is now hooked up to the local machine graphics card one output five. And if I go back down to my live works, my live toolbar here next to that toggle output identification right next to it, we have activate all assigned outputs. This is a very important button in Pixera. When I click this, it's going to activate that output. I'll bring up that output again, and we can see that it's been taken over. And if I click the button next to it, which is deactivate all outputs or shift escape, that will give me my desktop back. So activate all assigned outputs, deactivate all assigned outputs. The hotkeys for that are F5 and shift escape. This is really, really important. So F5 and shift escape. Now there's a shortcut. Uh, there's some hotkeys that it says it's pressing that alt escape up there. That is actually being done by the software itself. I'm not pressing those buttons. So no need to worry about that. I'm just pressing F5. And then when I want to turn it off, shift escape. And if I want to see and make sure that I have uh, actual control of that output, I can go back over to the preview tab. And up in that workspace toolbar, I have right next to my grid, a button called show test pattern. So let's hit F5 again. And then hit show test pattern. And we can see on my output that we have a test pattern. All right, that's everything we need to do in the mapping tab. So now we're going to move over into the compositing tab. And from here, our layout looks a little bit different. We have still these three panels. This library has changed a little bit. We now have resources and timelines and screen groups. The type of stuff that we have in this panel has changed, but it is still our stuff. We'll talk more about this later. Then we have our workspace and we have our inspector and we've added a timeline down here in the bottom. Now, because it's our first project, I'm just going to go over the simple way to add content, which is to go to our resource browser and I can either double click here or click on that arrow and twirl down our uh, resources here. And I can click on this arrow again to get some of our standard content. And I'm just going to click and drag one of these straight onto my screen object here. And that's going to drop that content onto the timeline. Now I'm not seeing anything on my output yet. In order to do that, because the timeline is stopped, we currently don't have any content loaded. So if I hit play, or the space bar, we'll see that we start playing back content. Now, I still don't have any content here. That's because I still have my test pattern activated. If I click off on the test pattern, we can see there's my output going and I can back up my now pointer here and hit play. Alrighty, you did it. You've got something outputting in Pixera. I'm very proud of you. Uh, welcome to the Pixera family. Uh, we'll see you for the rest of the series where we'll dig more into the compositing tab as well as some other features of the screens and mapping tabs. See you then.